The 2022 Canada's Tournament is over and Nepo has absolutely smashed it. In 2018, Caruana had 9 out of 14 points in the Candidates Tournament. This year, Nepo got 9.5. So not only did he absolutely destroy in the Candidates Tournament, he did it in historic fashion. And this video will unpack the strategy, the games, the preparation that allowed Nepo to become the next World Championship challenger for the second year in a row. You're watching the Chess Geek channel, subscribe for more videos like this, and let's go ahead and begin. The first thing that went his way and that was important for his ultimate success was the incredible start and beginning that he had to the tournament. In round one, he was playing with the black pieces against Ding Loren, China's best player, and with the black pieces, no one expected him to win. It seemed impossible and very unlikely that he would be able to win this first round. I mean, many people didn't think he would win the whole tournament, and many people believe Ding had a very solid chance of winning. So, uh, if anything, most people believed that Nepo would lose this first game, but Nepo played super aggressively, stacking his pieces on the king side, continuing uh, to get more pieces, and you'll see a very uh, serious amount of trades going on uh, later in commentary, Ding emphasized that taking with the queen was better because the knight is well placed here. It can activate at some point with c5. So taking with the knight was a little slow and it allowed for the ultimate tactical parade to start on the board. And you can see already all of these pieces are slowly coming in and it seems like the attack is inevitable. So, so calm and smoothly, Nepo brought his pieces into the game. And uh, once you positionally bring all your pieces involved, eventually something tactical will happen. And here, the tactical thing occurred. He could sacrifice the rook, which is exactly what he did. So he gave away his rook. But now there's too much pressure here. Uh, after f4, uh, because the rook was uh, too powerful attacking f2, now there's check. And black regains some of the material taking the rook here. There's a threat of mate, so king took, and now the game ended with the brilliant bishop h3 check, and Ding Loren resigned. I covered this check uh, on my social media platforms, TikTok and Instagram, and my YouTube clips channel, and the reason that Ding Loren resigned here, as a quick reminder, if the king moves anywhere else, there would be uh, some checkmate that would occur on the board. If the king takes the bishop, there is also going to be a checkmate here, the easiest way is h5 check, queen to h3. And with the huge amount of threats and different checkmates that exist on the position, I mean, there's so many different threats uh, of checkmate and attacking, there's no way to defend. I mean, the king is totally encaged uh, and enclosed in this box. There's nothing to do here. The game would be over. So a super convincing and impressive result to begin the tournament win. Another important aspect that allowed Nepo to win in such convincing style was the fact that he never stopped playing at his peak. Sometimes if you're playing a long game and you're getting small advantages, you know, you, you build up into a sizable advantage, sometimes you forget that there's a chance of losing, you start playing a bit more carelessly, and you end up losing the game. And Nepo is just not that type of person. I mean, from the first move until resignation or checkmate, he is going to fight at his best. He never will, you know, give less effort towards the end of the game. And that sometimes is the key that separates good and great players. Now, there was multiple examples of this in the tournament. We can look at two specifically. The first was Nepo with the white pieces playing against Feruja. And we saw Sicilian, um, the opening is not so much what I'm focusing on right now, although it was a very hectic opening, black launching the pawns at the queen side, white doing the same on the king side. Uh, and it's no surprise that at some point white managed to get an advantage because, I mean, this is a very sharp tactical, um, decisive type of position. So one player will get an advantage. It's less likely to end up in a draw. And that's exactly what happened here. I mean, white wins some pawns. Uh, it's clear that the king here is much more exposed than this one here. The pawn on a3 shuts the pressure the rook had. I mean, everything is going in white's favor. 
And this is exactly a position, I mean, after playing for hours, um, and especially Ferruja, Nepo's opponent in this game, he was thinking and used his entire clock. I mean, at this position, he had like a minute and a, and a half left. I mean, he had no time. And so Nepo had to wait that entire time, letting his opponent think for so long. And very often that um, will mean that Nepo won't play at his best. I mean, he's going to slowly start thinking about what he's going to have for lunch tomorrow and things of this. His mind is going to leave the focused realm that it was in and he's going to stop focusing so much on the game but again as i mentioned that's not his playing style and you can see he continued to play in such precision and and with so much um in such a precise nature and and so much accuracy and and that really is emphasized in this position here in this position i mean his opponent also has seconds on the clock at this point so very logical and no one could blame a player for very simply just taking the pawn here right or um you know maybe the rook is hanging so moving the rook just playing any casual calm move that keeps the advantage and, and doesn't go for something but nepo took some time and just quickly and precisely calculated the finishing blow of rook takes h7 and he trusted himself to play it and that's the key i mean if you have an advantage it's risky to do something like this because there's that small chance that you miscalculated something and you're going to blow your advantage. But Nepo trusts his calculation and that's what it comes down to. And here he ended up winning in the most precise way. Again, even with seconds, with nothing to lose, uh, you know, by just playing normal, casual, small, positional, improving moves, he could have just won the game like that. But again, he's not that type of player. And here, Finally, Ferruja resigned with just five seconds. And so this was one example of him playing with precision the entire game. And here's another one. Again, he had the white pieces this time a little later in the tournament against Duda. And once again, he got this pawn avalanche moving on the king side. And he got a nice advantage. I mean, the bishop is trapped here. Um, the king is exposed. The rooks are active. This is going very nicely for white, and this is exactly that type of position where maybe white will start to slip a little, not focus so much on the position, again, start uh, letting th their mind drift to other thoughts and let the advantage slip. But no, once again, that's not how Nepo conducts his business. And here, for example, a very casual move would be rook takes g7, but at least practically, this gets rid of a ton of the advantage. Also, objectively, I mean, before white was basically checkmating here, black has a way to get back into the game slightly by going, for example, queen e3 uh, and trading the queens. That was the main threat that black was posing. And after a queen trade, although it's true the rooks are active, this pawn is strong, black has rooks. The rooks can maybe get active as well. This pawn is very strong as well. So, even though white objectively can probably still hold uh, a win, it's just practically not worth going into something like this. It, it complicates matters unnecessarily. So Nepo obviously saw this and very precisely moved the rook back to attack the queen. And now the queen cannot come to e3. And when the queen moves, then we take and it's totally game over. Uh, and in fact, here, Duda resigned for that fact. So the point that I'm making is it's important to get winning advantages, but once you have them, so often people let those advantages slowly slip because they're not playing as much uh, with as much effort. They're not trying as hard. And so Nepo kept it, uh, you know, at 100 percent effort the entire time the tournament was on. And that is something that really helped him have his ultimate success. Another super important fact was the strategical mindset he had in this tournament you can see that in many cases he went for a strategical draw very quickly instead of you know prolonging the game he didn't have necessarily a fighting spirit he wanted to play in the most mathematically safe way and even though he always kept 100 percent effort that means that in many cases he went for force draw variations and we have also some examples of those you know for example here with the black pieces He's comfortably leading. He's playing against report with the white pieces. It's a risk of losing in some cases. So what did he decide to do? He decided to blitz out some nice preparation where he sacrificed his rook on a8 in order to play bishop h3, 
threatening mate and after pawn takes go into this uh, more or less forced draw. Now, as it turns out, uh, pretty pretty funny is the fact that Richard decided to stop the draw and he went for F3, which is objectively worse. And in fact, Nepo ended up winning this game. I kind of covered this and talked a little bit about this game in my last video uh, about the candidates. Uh, you'll see that Nepo ends up totally crushing here and winning. Uh, so if you want a more in-depth analysis of kind of the psychology and what happened in this game, check out my last video. But the point is he was prepared and hoping for a strategical um, a, a strategical game where he's going to go for a quick draw, which would help him in the standings. And that again appeared later in the in the tournament where a draw was all he needed basically to secure the entire victory. A draw is all he went for. In this game, now with the white pieces, he went for this super theoretical draw that, you know, grandmasters, if they want to draw with the white pieces, they more or less go for this variation. And so you can see that although he always had 100% of fighting spirit, and for example, in the game where he wanted to go for a draw and report didn't let him, he ended up continuing to play and win the game. So he always has that fighting spirit he knows when to strategically go for draws that will help him in his entire goal of ultimately winning this tournament. And, and this strategy of going for smart draws uh, was really useful in this tournament and highlighted multiple times. And in my opinion, those are the main things that helped Nepo win in this tournament. It was his really stunning preparation. It was the fact that he strategically went for draws when it was advantageous for him to do so. It was the fact that he never stopped fighting and trying and he never got distracted in the game and always played 100% effort through the entire game and match as a whole. And it's really these things combined that made him and allowed him to dominate the field so much. Hopefully he also combines these things for the World Championship match and maybe we'll have a more serious and intense fight this time around against Magnus than we did last time. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of Nepo's fighting spirit and his entire performance in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want more videos like this. Also check out my chess website where you can see all the cool stuff that I'm working on and I will see all of you guys next time. Peace out.